John Renborn, as anybody that knows much about me, knows that John Renborn was the biggest influence in my musical life. Um, and this song was really the biggest introduction to him. Uh, this is Lady Nothing's Toy Puff, and it's a piece I've been playing for uh, 40 years, I'd have to say. Um, and it, uh, a student came to me in, uh, when I was 17, 18 years old, and had been trying to play, had said, oh, there are two things I want to learn, two songs I want to learn, and he stumbled through this, and he stumbled through uh, Dallas Rag. Um, from, so two huge things happened because of this one student. It got me into playing ragtime guitar, uh, picked up Stefan Grossman's book, Contemporary Ragtime Guitar, and picked up John Renborn's book that was out at the time. This came out in 1972. This was $2.95 when I bought it brand new back in about 1973, probably. And, uh, I, and I, I picked up his first two albums that were a double, double record that were released here in the U.S. Uh, they were albums he actually made in 65, 65 and 66, or both came out in 65, I think. Uh, John Renborn and Another Monday, his first two albums. And Another Monday had some just incredible pieces on it. Well, they both had great pieces. L little bluesy ones, he sang stuff, he did Candyman, Gary Davis, and, and then he had these neo quasi renaissance pieces that with full of counterpoint lady nothing's toy puff a little bit later lady goes to church another really complicated thing and hearing this type of thing on a steel string guitar and then hearing renaissance tunes that he really played um, that many of which are in this book picture on the back very cool of John um, had uh, this was one of the things that just changed my musical direction. I said, that's where I'm going. I, I want to be able to write things like that. I want to be able to play things like that. I want to be able to perform things like that. And, because of my normal mindset, I want to teach things like that. So, um, we're going to take a look at Lady Nothing's Toy Puff. Other songs in this book that I've, I already have, already have a lesson on Judy. Um, there's uh, A Day at the Seaside, Debbie Ann, um, The Earl of Salisbury. So, a lot of tunes that uh, we may get to someday. But for now, I, I want to really delve into this piece, Lady Nothing's Toy Puff. Now, the title is very interesting because uh, Renaissance pieces were frequently had kind of whimsical titles, or they'd be named after, after people, Lady Hammond's Almond. And an Almond was a type of dance, or an Almain, depending on which country you're, you're talking about it in. Um, Lady Hunsdon's Puff, uh, Mrs. White's Nothing, a toy. So these were all titles. Those were all titles of John Dowland pieces, and so John Renborn, in his uh, whimsical way, titled this tune "Lady Nothing's Toy Puff," um, all of which are terms that are used. And, and of course, it's spelled with all the all the e's that you see in Renaissance. Uh, I mean, in, in old English, very old English stuff. So we're gonna take a look. <laughs> At, uh, I'll break this up into into di digestible parts, and we'll work on voicings and all, all kinds of things that are that are important. In that you can learn a lot from working on this piece. So uh, here we go. I hope you enjoy this lesson on Lady Nothing's Toy Puff. <laughs> 